Let's, let's go back to West 67th Street. Around about the time you were, you were kids, let's say 9, 10, or 11 years old, and you're in elementary and junior high school, uh, we're interested in knowing what life was like at that point in time, particularly with some of the street vendors you had and some of the everyday events of your life. What can you talk about there? Well, um, I was born on Herman Avenue, right by 67th Street, and then when I was a couple of years old, my parents moved right on 67th Street. We were a half a mile from Lake Erie and a quarter of a mile from the tracks, and we loved our neighborhood. We were the wrong side of the tracks, but we were all poor. Everybody was from Italy, and it was like one big family. You walk up the street, everybody had eyes on you. If you were out of line, they'd let you know. They would even slap you if they have to, if they thought we were being sarcastic or anything. But they loved us and they meant well. And 95% of us in that neighborhood were very poor. And um, we had, uh, my, our family and other families were on what they called at that time charity, not welfare. And we would have a woman come into our home once a month, check every room out in the house. I still remember she was a very tall, tall Irish woman, had real black hair, very nice, and um, she smoked. And that was impressed me. <laughs> and um, she checked our house out to see that there were no, there wasn't any new furniture, new radios, anything that was not absolutely necessary was not allowed in the house unless someone gave it to you. And that way we were able to get food and clothes and sometimes coal. And most of the time the church gave us coal to stay warm. My dad worked for the city. Uh, before I was born, I guess he was a barber. And it, well, he wasn't making enough money, so he went to work for the city, shoveling uh, salt during the nighttime and putting the red bricks, making the roads with the red bricks. And, uh, but like I said, 95% of us were poor. And, um, but we, it was like one big family in the neighborhood. Everybody knew everybody. Did most of the people on the street get the same type of charity that your family did? I'd have to say about half of them. And then eventually um, our dads had more work and then we were able to get off of the charity. Then in lieu of those economics, where did you shop for things like food and clothes? Um, only in the neighborhood and downtown. We were able to walk downtown for the sales on clothes. And, uh, but otherwise, if you went to buy lunch meat, you wouldn't buy a half a pound or a pound. You would buy three or four slices. And uh, we had a little book we carried with us, and the uh, owner of the store would write down how much we spent. And then when payday came around, we would always pay on it. And my parents were very faithful in paying. They never questioned us. When we went in there, they would give us anything we asked for. And my parents were very really kind. I, unfortunately, when you're little, you don't realize what your parents really are. <laughs> and um, as I got older, I discovered that my dad and my mom were very, very warm-hearted, charitable people. In Our way. house was opened to everybody, as were most of the homes in our neighborhood. The bums would jump off the um, boxcars and go down the street and there were four or five of us that would open our doors to them. They'd come in and eat and thank us. And uh, no matter who came into the house, little kids or what, they get in the house, the first thing my mom would ask them, you want some 
bread and jelly because we didn't really have many cookies unless they made them. And um, uh, people from out of town stayed with us. And not only that, we also had boarders. And it was very open. It was like really like one big family. It's, I think that a lot of kids miss out on that today. However, Dad and I, uh, we've really tried to follow my parents' ways. Because, uh, you know, all your friends were here. In fact, I ran into one of your friends. I didn't even recognize him anymore. And, he felt bad that I didn't recognize him. He said, gosh, I ate at your house so many times. Don't you remember me, Mrs. Desafi? <laughs> Who was it? Um, he lived on Hetzel. I can't think of his name now. Uh, Calamaz. Do you remember? Was his last name was Calamaz. And there were others, too, that I remembered, of course. But uh, And our childhood was good. Dad will tell you about his. He lived in different neighborhoods, but we had a lemonade lady coming down when the weather was good, selling lemonade. And then we had a vegetable wagon coming down and uh, a chicken wagon. And then we had the Papa Riggs man, which really is paper and rags. But they took any junk we didn't want. And they came with uh, horses and they pulled a big cart. And then we had uh, a waffle wagon coming down. We had a man that came down in a car selling linens. Uh, you really didn't have to do much shopping because they all came up and down the streets. And, um, and it was fun, you know. We, we were poor, but we didn't know it. We were all poor. I found out when I went to high school that I wasn't, we really weren't well off. I only owned like two skirts and three blouses. And uh, it was, uh, we, we had fun. Our main social activities was the church. And uh, dances, the church had a lot of dances. The school did. They had a lot of uh, little feast days and everything. And consequently, I, I grew up with nuns and priests. My aunt was a nun. We had priests when Father Vincent, I have a picture of him here somewhere, he used to come to our house um, oh, very often. And I would run and jump on his lap, and he would start teaching me my prayers. and. He was very good. We used to look forward to him coming. He was very handsome. And the older girls used to say, Oh, did Father come to your house today? He's so handsome. <laughs> it was uh, funny. And then the nuns would be there all the time. and So we always had activity. But our home was furnished very, very poorly. But we had always had food. Always had a lot of food. What kind of foods did you eat then that we perhaps would not eat? Well, when we were on charity, we ate a lot of um, cornmeal. And they gave us cans with meat in it. But Italians would never eat anything out of a can. So my American aunts, Aunt Rose and Aunt Josephine, they loved the canned meat. So. They took the canned meat, but then they would give us something else in return. They would buy us a box of cereal or something my mother never would buy. And um, we had, uh, they gave us rice and flour, staples, things like that. But it was plenty. Did you eat snails? Oh, yes, snails. Snails were very cheap, extremely cheap. You could buy. Oh, a two-gallon pan full of snails for almost nothing. And my mom made them with uh, brown fried onions and garlic and sauce. And they were absolutely delicious. Really good. I wouldn't eat them today, but when I was a kid, they were great. One of the staples in Italian food was often fish. Did you eat a lot of oh, fish? Oh, yes. 
We ate a lot of fish, at least twice a week, mm -hmm. at least, yes. Always fresh fish, nothing, never out of a can.